<laughs> End of story. That is hilarious. I mean, the apple don't fall far from the tree. <laughs> Perfect, man. Perfect and as response. Billy would say, nor does the sap. Yeah. <laughs> Your personality is second to none. Like, you are a fun guy to talk to, be around. I remember uh, when I was much younger how entertaining it was <laughs> to be in the same room with you. And so, especially with you and Hank Jr. and how you used to razz him and give him a hard time. But um, when did it dawn? When did it sort of click that you could turn this into? You could become a television personality in your show, right? Your sh- a lot of people remember you from that show, and still today talk about it. Um, you still create content around that. So when did that start? And how how much sense did that make to you at the beginning? Right? Were you like, oh man, this is a natural. This makes you know. You, were other people doing this? Uh, well, it, you know, the fishing world was completely different than anything, any other sports world, because you really didn't have, uh, you didn't have enough prize money to make it, much like racing. You know, you got to have sponsors, yeah. and uh, or you're not going to make it on prize money. So in 1979, I won the Bassmaster Classic. I had no earthly idea what that meant. It was $25,000 first place. $25,000 was a lot of money in 1979, especially to me. But uh, I had no earthly idea what the opportunities were going to be with that title. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And as I started getting uh, opportunities and realized how much money you could literally make through endorsements and uh, promotions and opportunities, then I saw the light. Yeah. And I said, man, this thing can be pretty lucrative. And so as time went on, I just basically realized that the more publicity I get, the more influence I got on a consumer about buying my product. If I say, hey, I'm Hank Parker, well, they got to know who Hank Parker is. And I recommend you buy this lure. And the more notoriety I have, the more opportunity I have to to make money off of that endorsement. Well, as time went on, I kind of exhausted all my relationships with people with magazines and newspapers. I'd come up with all these ideas for articles. Well, you can only do that for so long. So then I thought, well, if I'm going to make more money and I'm going to grow, then I'm going to have to be in control of my own destiny as far as as publicity. Mm -hmm. So I gravitated to television, not having a clue what I was doing. Yeah. But, uh, How'd you do it then? Because I mean, like everybody thinks they're gonna, they could be on TV, whether it's hunting or fishing. But you ended up on a, a, a getting a TV deal. How do you do it? Well, you know, it's it it really took money, and it 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 took a big risk on my part. Everything that I'd ever earned or made in my whole life, I I, I put at risk because you had to personally buy the airtime. Then you had to produce your own show. Dang. And so it, it was a big step. And at that time, you know, we look at these little cameras today that has high resolution that can do 4K and you can buy one for $4,000. Well, the broadcast uh, networks required you to have an Ikigami 79 camera, which cost hundred grand, <laughs> And then you had to have a recorder. There, was no, there were no uh, uh, – mics everything was hardwired there wasn't any uh oh, of course yeah right. it's everything was hardwired it's, it, yeah and so you you had wires running up your britches legs and a guy with a mixer in the back of your boat you know it yeah. was a bit and so you had to buy all of that stuff and so it was about a four hundred thousand dollar investment to get the equipment to edit and uh to to video and then you had to buy it by your airtime so we bartered our airtime. We bought mostly from NBC and uh, CBS and uh, network stations, and we bought different markets around the country. So we did it different from everybody else. And um, that's that, we made that it blows work. my mind. I know it because I, that that right there is an investment. Now, at what point then you talked about the endorsements? I would have to assume then you are now uh, attractive to other endorsers. You've got your own television show. Who cares how you had to get it? You got it. And so did that open up to where it started paying for itself? And then people started, rather than you having to buy airtime, well, they started, it, you started selling? <laughs> I, I had no idea how any of that worked, you know. And so it's all based on cost per thousand, CPM. And, to this uh, day. Yeah, and I'm, day. I'm trying to think, what in the world is all of this, you know? And I, I've got 
boat sponsors. I've got Ranger Boats. I've got Mercury Outboards. And I've got all these endemic companies. But then we are having people like Chevrolet and other companies start to inquire about, uh, hey, we'd like to sponsor your show and we'll pay you this based on your delivery. And I said, well, how do you determine that? Well, your our CPM cost is twenty seven fifty per thousandth, and you're our demographics, and that's what the value is. And so I'm so I got a lot of lessons. It was it was a learning <laughs> process. Is, from I jumped in and had no earthly idea. And it somehow it just all worked out. <laughs> Holy moly, that blows my mind, right? Yeah. So this is so Hank Parker's Outdoor Magazine on TNN in 1985. You had Michael Runnels. Um, who was Michael? Michael was a guy that was a technical guy for Humminbird who had a degree in uh, marketing, and he understood how it all came together. Yep. And so I got hooked up with him and he did all the administrative stuff so i was still competing yeah and so i've never you know this more than anybody else there's so much business behind the scenes in nascar but that don't matter when you put that helmet on you can forget all of that it's about that racetrack and that moment yeah well i've got all this business to run i've got all these sponsors i've got all this airtime. i've got all these demands on getting shows ready and delivered to certain networks at certain times and all that stuff is just a big distraction because i got to go fish lake toho next week yeah and I, so I need to have my mind cleared where I don't worry about anything. And I did. I separated my business totally. So I had to have a person that could handle yeah. all that. So your show was famous for having a lot of celebrities that were not in the fishing world, right? Yep. So who yep. were we some did. of the, I guess, you know, Dab was probably uh, uh, a blast. But who were some of the celebrities that you would have on there that was that maybe had no idea what they were doing? Well, I won't say they had no idea, but my biggest celebrity ever is uh, uh, when Bo Jackson played uh, two sports. He was the first guy to ever get that notoriety yep. and uh, pull that off. And so Nike was running commercials all over television, Bonos, Bonos, yep. and it, it was a huge deal. So I'm sitting in my office one day, and everybody's gone. It's probably 5.30 in the afternoon. The phone rings, and it's Bo. <laughs> and uh, he asked for Hank Parker. And I thought it was a joke. Yeah. I, I didn't know who in the world was calling me, <laughs> pretending to be Bo Jackson. But he said, hey, man, I'm going to go fishing with you. And uh, it, it worked out. It was just so awesome. And he was playing at that time for the Kansas City Royals. And uh, he had a week off, uh, uh, played a doubleheader like on a Tuesday. So the next Wednesday he was off. I was going to, to Oklahoma to fish on the Verdigree River. So I invited him to come. He did. And, and we did a show. And uh, Bo was the coolest guy. I mean, it was just were, amazing. Were those type of people calling you all the time? Hey, I want to go fishing with you. We had quite a few. But, you know, I fished with a lot of football coaches. I fished with Tony Dungy. I, 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 I fished with uh, Randy White of the Cowboys. I, I, I fished with Larry Bird. Bird was a wow. cool, cool guy. Yeah, hey, I bet that was awesome. With. Yeah, he, he was cool. So. Yeah. How many times did you have Dad on? We probably fished together about 10 times, and we did about four shows together. Really? One That's of, so cool. One of my favorite. I have to tell this on him. He, uh, <laughs> you know, today, if if you were still racing and you or Jimmy Johnson, let's just pick on Jimmy. If Jimmy was racing and he he fell out of the race and the, the, all the media was there sticking microphones in his face, hey, Jimmy, what happened? He said, Well, you know, we had uh, we broke broke a valve spring and uh, uh, so we were limping around and we were just trying to get those points that are so important and we finally broke a crank and it took us out of the race he'd give you that explanation you stick that microphone in, in dale's face and he'd say blowed up <laughs> yeah. and he'd look at you like he had two heads yeah but what do you mean what happened we were just talking about yeah, that yeah. how he would do you uh, could tell that, when he was pissed oh and he, yeah but he'd just oh, say yeah. Few words. oh yeah. yeah he's gonna tell you right quick so i was doing a show out at his uh, out at the farm and Taylor and my daughter Lucy, they were fishing for catfish, and uh, Dale and I were sitting up there watching. And uh, Taylor hung a catfish, and she had a little Mickey Mouse rod and reel, and it was more than Mickey could bear. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> their little ears laying all over the pond dam. And, <laughs> and Earnhardt looks over at her and says, Taylor, what happened? And she pooched that little lip out, and she looked at him with them little beady eyes and said, It blowed up. <laughs> 
<laughs> End of story. That is I mean, the apple don't fall far from the tree. <laughs> Perfect, man. Perfect and as Billy talking. would say, nor does the sap. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, if you like that video, you'll love the entire podcast. The Dale Jr. Download, it's available on all major podcast platforms.